Hello everyone. Today I thought it would be interesting to analyze the Romulan fleet. Their species and their overall navy was always a mystery for the longest time, and only during Next Generation and Deep Space Nine were we able to get a deeper look into their ships and their society. The Romulan Star Navy, or the Romulan Imperial Fleet, operates an array of different kinds of ships, such as the Warbirds, the Bird of Prey, and other vessels that will be reviewed in this video. Their navy and their overall military has a very well structured hierarchy that descends from Vulcan's rank structure, which is no surprise since they used to be Vulcans a long time ago. At the top of their navy are admirals, and then descends to their commanders, and then all the way to their sub lieutenants. When it comes to Romulan technology, they share very similar weapons to other races within the Alpha and Beta Quadrant, such as the Green and the Klingons. The Romulans claim to be the first race to develop cloaking technology. Being one of the first races to have cloaking technology within their quadrant allowed them to be more tactful during engagements. The Romulans would never engage into combat without having the upper hand, which is the complete opposite for the Klingons, who would enjoy the challenge. Just like the Klingons in the green, they also use disruptors, which is a highly charged plasma which can be fired as a pulse or a beam. Another common weapon used by the Romulans are plasma torpedoes, which is an extremely powerful weapon capable of causing huge damage to their enemies, such as the Federation. Once a plasma torpedo hits its target, it causes a massive explosion. A major disadvantage is that it's not a long range weapon, its power decreases over time. Now let's review the Romulan Star Empire ships, and at the end of the video, we'll go over the different strategies they use to stay at dominant power in their quadrant, and we'll also look at what they need to do to improve as well. Starting out on the list is the Scorpion Fighter. They're used by the Remans, who are a humanoid species under the control of the Romulans. The Romulans also operate this fighter as well. The time of service for this vessel is between the 24th and the 25th century. This vessel also carries up to two crew members as well. The ship is armed with disruptors, torpedo launcher, and a plasma torpedoes. It's also defended by a deflected shield and a cloaking device. The fighter is agile and is capable of causing severe damage. The size of the fighter is unknown, but compared to the Romulan shuttle, it's probably one fourth of the size of the vessel. The size of the Romulan shuttle is 24.23 meters in length. It's classified as a long range warp shuttle used by the Romulans in the late 24th century. It's able to carry 15 crew members and has a warp drive capable of going warp 9.6. It's armed with six mounted disruptors and two photon torpedo launchers. It's also defended by a cloaking device and shields. The next vessel within the Romulan fleet is the Talis class also referred to as the V8 class. This type of vessel was in service during the mid to late 23rd century and the 25th century. The Romulans planned to use this ship to re-establish the Romulan Star Empire as a major power after a century of isolation. The design of the Tillis class is heavily influenced by an older version of a bird of prey called the Tavaro, which was in service during the 22nd century. The first time we saw the Tavaro class was in a Star Trek TV show called Enterprise. It had a warp drive that can go up to warp 7 and it had a length of 130 meters. It was also equipped with disruptor banks and advanced cloaking device. It had a shield which could only be used when the vessel was not cloaked and that also included weapons as well. There's also an updated version of the Tavaro class that was in service in the 24th and 25th century. This class of vessel was classified as a light warbird. It can fit up to 150 crew members and has a warp drive that can go up to warp 9. It's armed with one plasma dual cannon, one plasma dual beam array, one plasma turret, two plasma beam arrays, and two plasma torpedo launchers. The ship is also defended by deflector shields and a cloaking device. The Talis on the other hand was 20.1 meters longer than Tavaro and it was able to go up to warp 8. The vessel was armed with plasma torpedoes, nuclear weapons, two disruptor arrays, and one torpedo launcher. It was also defended by deflector shields and a cloaking device. The ship also had two Romulan shuttlecrafts in the shuttle bay as well. There is a bigger version of the Talis called the Karis, which was launched in the 2270s. The ship was commissioned by Gaius in honor of his father who died in the original Star Trek show. The ship was six times bigger than the Talis, so that makes the vessel around 900 meters in length. It's equipped with a cloaking device and a warp drive. Even though we don't know exactly what kind of weapons the ship had, we could probably guess it had the same kinds of armaments as the Talis, which was plasma torpedoes, nuclear weapons, disruptor arrays, and a torpedo launcher. The vessel also had a shuttle bay as well. 
Not every ship that's operated by the Romulans were created by them. The D7 cruiser was initially created by the Klingon Empire, but the Romulans were able to come to agreement with the Klingons and start creating their own D7. This vessel entered into service in the mid 23rd century. This ship was a serious threat to the Federation and was able to take on most of the Federation ships during that time. The D7 is 228 meters in length and had a warp drive that's capable of going warp 9. The vessel was also capable of carrying 430 crew members as well. It was armed with two disruptor cannons, one photon torpedo launcher, a magnetic pulse generators, and phaser emitters. The vessel was also defended by deflector shields and a cloaking device. In the 24th century, the Romulan Navy created the Villas class, which is the frigate made to protect the fleet. This vessel is equipped with a cloaking projector, which increases the fleet's cloaking ability without draining their power. This ship is a support vessel and is not heavily armed compared to other ships on the list. It has four banks of plasma torpedoes and an array of disruptors. The ship also has a deflector shields and a cloaking device. With the fleet filled with warbirds and bird of prey, the Romulans created a dreadnought called the Cortron. This vessel was fast and agile and had a very similar design to the D Daredex class, but was a smaller vessel to keep its maneuverability. The Cortron was 650 meters in length and can fit a crew of 890. Through my research, I've seen this vessel referred to as a warbird, so I'll leave it up to you guys to decide if it's a warbird or a dreadnought. Technically, they probably could be both, but as stated before, I'll leave it up to you guys to decide. Now let's find out what this vessel is equipped with. It's armed with disruptors and a plasma torpedo, and it's also defended by deflector shields and a cloaking device. If you want more information about this vessel, I linked a video from another channel that goes more in detail about this ship, so check it out if you're interested. The Nurkson class, also referred to as a Valdor, is a Romulan warbird which entered into service in the 24th century. The vessel has a very similar design to the D Daredex and the Tavaro class. What stands out about this ship is its wingspan, which is roughly 900 meters in width. The first time we saw this vessel was when it was assisting the USS Enterprise in attacking a rogue Riemann warbird called the Scimitar. The Valdor is armed with disruptor cannons, which is mounted on both of their wings in the forward section as well. In total, this vessel is armed with 12 disruptor banks and 6 photon torpedo launchers. It's also defended by deflector shields and a cloaking device. Even though it was never stated in the movie Nemesis, it seems like this ship was built to work within a unit of other Valdors to outflank and overwhelm its enemies. Before we go over the D Daredex class, we have to give an honorary mention to the Scimitar, which is a massive heavily armed Riemann Warbird. This vessel is secretly built to overthrow the Romulan government, defeat the United Federation, and to liberate the Riemanns. This ship was 890 meters in length and is capable of going warp 9.7. It was armed with 52 pulse disruptor cannons, 27 photon torpedo launchers, and a Thaleron cascading biogenic pulse weapon. It's also defended by primary and secondary shields and a highly advanced cloaking device. The D Daredex class is the most iconic vessel operated by the Romulans and the most recognizable. It was known as the B-Type Warbird and is one of the largest and most powerful vessel operated by the Romulans in the 24th century. It served as the fleet's backbone for most of the century and is used by the Romulan Navy and the Tal Shiar. The Valdor was also used by both of these factions as well. The D Daredex has a warp drive capable of going 9.6 and is around twice the size of a Galaxy class vessel, which makes it a length of 1041.65 meters. Due to its size, it's capable of carrying 1500 crew members, plus troops. It's armed with 6 disruptor arrays, 2 photon torpedo launchers, and a shield inversion beam. It's also defended by deflector shields and a cloaking device. It has a shuttle bay complemented with 16 shuttlecrafts and 8 shuttle pods. In the shows, it seems like the Romulans prefer to use one class of ship within their fleet and have a few support vessels as well, such as fighters, shuttles, and frigates. Other sci-fi factions such as the Klingons and the Federation use an array of different outdated ships within their fleet, while the Romulans seem to stick with the most updated vessel. In many ways, it's a smart idea to fill up your fleet with the most updated vessels, but it could lead to issues such as stretching out your most updated vessel too thin. During war, there's only a certain amount of these ships that the Romulans have and can build, so it doesn't make much sense to only have the most updated vessel within your fleet. By putting out vessels that are outdated to fill in the gaps will limit the risk of having too many updated vessels out of commission. What's your thoughts about the Romulan fleet and which one is your favorite ship? My favorite vessel is the Talis. It's a simple but intimidating design, and it shows the power of the Romulan Star Empire. The Valdor is my second favorite. Hopefully, we get to see both these ships in action in future shows. Thank you for watching, and please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Also, don't forget to check out my socials as well.
If you enjoyed this video, then please check out these other two videos displayed on the screen. Thank you for watching Utopian Broadcast, and I'll see you next time on my channel. Thank you.